Hey, hello and welcome to What the Blog. And today we're talking about uh, stream repeater mode. So we're going to be talking about repeater block and we're going to specifically be covering streaming mode. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, find our block, bring it out. And if you've used this block before, you may have noticed this mode property. So we've already seen a normal repeater in other videos, uh, but let's cover some of the lesser known modes that exist, namely threaded. We'll cover, I'm sorry, uh, stream. We'll cover threaded in another video. So today we're talking about streaming mode. Uh, basically stream is a table that uh, basically gets updates as they come in, right? Uh, so the rows can go away, new rows can come in. So it's a table that constantly changes. And if you require some sort of processing on the table like that, um, where you want to make sure that, um, you know, once one row is processed, kind of another row is triggered, uh, and it keeps processing new rows as they come in, this is where uh, streaming, um, repeater basically is uh, is going to be the key. Um, now, comparatively, threaded repeater will also tackle one row at a time, but it's designed mostly for static table tables where you have a lot of data. And rather than executing um, basically a symbol of sorts on all the rows at, all at once, this will allow you to thread it uh, to do one at a time on multiple uh, at a time. Uh, now, streaming is specifically uh, geared towards a table that, that's getting updates rather than a static table. Okay, so to begin, we first need to get a streaming table. Now, there are various DSLinks that, get, that can output a streaming table. For example, alarming uh, is a streaming table. But for us, we need something that changes fast enough so we can demonstrate it quickly. Um, and for that, I have to set one up. The way I do this is um, I'm simply using one of the nodes I have under my data node. I created a node called uh, it, node one. Uh, and what I'm doing is um, I'm using a set block basically to set it to a random number. I'm using two of these, I'm triggering it very quickly. You can see I'm using uh, five hundredths of a second. Uh, for each one of those, right? So I'm writing random values to that same node, uh, basically twice for every 500 of a second. And when I'm reading it, right, this block is just reading it. Um, I set the QoS, which is quality of service to three, which means I don't want to lose a single value. So if I, if there's something I cannot update fast enough, it gets stored in a table, which is why as an output, you have a table rather than node value, right? So node value is 0.72, whatever, whatever, right? But here you get a table, not a single value. So if we look at that table right now, it's that value. However, if we start um, our stopwatch here and start really throwing values at this, you can see that now you get two values here because it's happening just too quickly and it cannot update fast enough. So it creates a queue of two updates, right? Uh, and kind of goes through them um, as it's updating, right? So this is a typical uh, streaming table. Now, as you can see, this one streams very quickly. So it's gonna be good to demonstrate um, basically how the streaming mode of the repeater works. All right, so let me stop this for now. Okay, so um, for the repeater, so I also created this values table, which basically has timestamp and a value. And what I want to do is on, for every update of a streaming table, so for every row, I want to add an entry to my values table where timestamp will go to TS and a value will go to value multiplied by 100. So rather than getting a random value between zero and one, I'm gonna be getting a random value between zero and 100 round it. So for that, I have to create a symbol. Uh, and obviously this calls for inserting or adding row to a table. So I'm just going to use add row block and immediately wrap it into a symbol. Um, I'm going to call it insert row and 
and try to spell it correctly. I'm gonna go in and first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a property to pass in the table, basically my target table to, to which I'm planning to add rows. So I'm gonna do table data, call it target table, hit okay. I'm gonna go ahead and use this symbol that I've just created. So it's under my symbols now. Pardon me, I already have the old one. I'm just gonna delete so you don't get confused. Um, so I'm gonna use this insert row symbol that I've just created as a symbol in my repeater. I'm gonna use this table as my driver. All right, and I'm gonna go and edit uh, the first instance. So basically edit the symbol, but this time in context of a repeater. So when I look at my properties, um, I, it, this is still null. So let me close out. And before I go edit, let me go ahead and bind my target table to the render property, right? So remember, so our symbol properties show up here and I can bind things to them. Um, so this is my target table now. Uh, so if I look at my symbol while editing, editing it in context in the repeater, right? I now have basically my target table, which of course is going to go straight to my target table of my add row block. If you recall, when you pass a writable table into the symbol via a repeater, it remains writable. So you can still write to it, even though here it's basically looks like a regular table, not a writable one, but because I passed the writable one to here, inside the symbol, it remains writable. So we're gonna write to it. Uh, and then we're gonna write two values, TS and value. And keep in mind, we're not dealing with the streaming part of it yet. We're just setting up a symbol that does something. Um, and we're gonna use map to table block just to read our current row, right? Which gives, gives us the current row of the table that drives the repeater. And timestamp will go right to the timestamp. And value, we first need to multiply it by 100, like we decided. And, and then we're going to round it. And then the, finally, the output will go to value. So we have this set up. There's just one thing we're missing. We have nothing to invoke our add row. So we have nothing to trigger this to happen. Uh, we could do this on change, but this is very dangerous because you can end up, first of all, with an endless loop of some sort. And secondly, uh, there may not be a change, right? Uh, I don't know if you get, in here, of course, we deal with a timestamp and a value. So technically our timestamp will change every time. Uh, however, if it's some other type of data that's not timestamped, um, you may not you may not get uh, a change, right? If, like the next row can be the same value. You may still need to write it, right? So, so using a value change uh, to execute this at row block is just not good enough. Uh, and for streaming mode, right? There is a special set of properties you can create. Um, special set of triggers, right? Which uh, will give you an event on symbol initialization. And also uh, there's another trigger that's when triggered will let the repeater know that this symbol has executed and it's ready to tackle the next one. The triggers I'm talking about have to be named precisely on init, camel case, right? So some lowercase on and then capital I in init. So on init and on done. So on init will invoke my add row and on done will be triggered by on complete of my add row. All right, so here I'm going to pin it so it's visible here in the block. All right, so basically on init is something that the repeater will trigger for me. All right, when this instance of my symbol is ready to be executed. And on done is something I trigger from inside this instance to let the repeater know that this instance has done its job and it can move on to the next one, All right? So I'm gonna go ahead and accept. And 
that's it. I can do it from here. Um, there is one, so by the way, do not need to bind anything here. Uh, so it'll repeater will handle this. Um, so there's one thing I need to handle. I don't want endlessly add to endlessly add to add rows to this values table because it will grow exponentially. You can imagine for two rows per every five hundredth of a second. So I'm going to create a set of logic that will just keep the last hundred rows at all times. Right? Um, so I'm going to first uh, get the length of a table. Right. Then I'm going to subtract from that length, I'm subtract 100. I'm going to create an expression using the replace block to say row less or equals to whatever the length is or the remaining length. And then I'm going to use this as a result of my length and uh, I'm going to use remove rows block. You know, this table will be, of course, my target table. And this condition will be my condition. And it'll be triggered by a change in the table. There we go. So that uh, should basically remove everything but the last hundred rows. Okay, let's see if this works. I'm gonna go ahead and start the stopwatch. Okay, um, so right now our, looks like our logic just deletes all the tables. So let me quickly unwind this and let, actually, let me, Sure, we're still getting the yes, we're getting the value. Oh, yeah, I need to switch this repeater to stream. There we go. We started getting the values here. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and rebind my lock. There you go. So now, so I'm always getting last 99 rows here. All right. Again, this has nothing to do with streaming repeater. This is just so my Final table doesn't grow too big, and I already have it bound to a chart um, right here. So you can see that it's this table gets plotted. Uh, this is what it looks like. All right, so you see 100 rows just constantly being appended at very high speed. Uh, and um, there we go. All right, so this displays the queue. So as it executes the updates in the table, uh, it shows you the queue. So if it starts really falling behind uh, or running out of memory, you see that you'll see this queue pile up. That means you're you're pushing data too fast, and your repeater is not handling it in time. In this case, we're fine. This doesn't grow too big ever. Um, so there you go. There's the streaming mode of a repeater demonstrated um, and uh, ready for you to use for your own uh, applications. Well, this has been What the Block. I'm Paul Sinenko, and I'll see you next time when we will be talking about the Reddit mode of the repeater. Thank you.